we don't know that much about Joseph in the nativity story. What we do know is that he had family in Bethlehem. Perhaps he came from Bethlehem. It is likely that Mary and Joseph had been uh, part of an arranged marriage from childhood. And so they might not have seen that much of each other. And just to explain that the Jewish system uh, of marriage was quite different from our own in that there were three different stages. The first stage was the betrothal, which was a, a legal marriage uh, that would have taken place, but without a big party. Uh, and then there would be a time of preparation because Joseph would have only been between 17 and 20 years old and Mary would have been considerably younger. And in this time of preparation, he's doing his apprenticeship. And then the third stage of the marriage was the marriage uh, feast, the wedding itself, where the two would come together. And so they wouldn't have actually lived as man and wife uh, until the marriage feast, uh, which would have been considerably later than the betrothal after this preparation time. And so perhaps that just helps to put things a little bit into perspective. Because here we are finding that uh, Mary, his beloved, his betrothed, is pregnant. How do you think he must have felt? It was like a betrayal. Uh, and uh, if you've uh, ever experienced a, a feeling of, of being betrayed uh, from somebody you really loved and trusted, uh, then you'll get a glimpse into um, Joseph's feelings here. Uh, but he doesn't act out those feelings in the sense that he's a very good man and he loves Mary. Now, uh, under the Jewish law, uh, if a man finds that he's betrothed, uh, she should be stoned to death uh, after a, a court hearing. Now, of course, Joseph doesn't want to uh, go that far, but he does decide uh, that he is going to discreetly divorce her. And then he has this dream where the angel, perhaps it was the same angel that appeared to Mary, this angel comes to him in a dream and he says, it's okay, Joseph, don't be scared. Well, you would be scared, wouldn't you? Because if you're uh, betrothed, uh, had become pregnant, you would be thinking, well, I can't trust this person. Uh, do they really love me? What's happened? What's happening? But the angel says, don't be scared to marry her and explains uh, that this child within her is of the Holy Spirit. This is a God thing. This is a miracle. It's good to know uh, that when we're upset, when we feel betrayed, when we feel angry or distraught, uh, you know, those feelings are allowed. Even Joseph had those feelings. Uh, we have to step back sometimes and take some time uh, by ourselves to ponder uh, and pray and decide if anything, what to do. And if even Joseph had those feelings, uh, then we too are going to have them. And what is important is how we act upon our feelings. And in this case, Joseph uh, is compassionate. Now, uh, the Jewish people had been waiting to hear from God for 200 years. There'd been no prophet for 200 years. Uh, so this is a wonderful thing. And they were awaiting this promised Messiah. And the angel goes on to say, you shall name him Jesus. Uh, she will bear a son for he will save his people from their sins. So the name Jesus means God saves. Uh, it's all about salvation. But instead of uh, suggesting that the Messiah will save them from their enemies, from the Roman occupation, here the angel says that this is going to be a spiritual kind of salvation, uh, that Jesus is going to save his people uh, from whatever it is that separates them from God. Uh, Matthew, who is the writer of this gospel, knows his Old Testament 
uh, prophecies uh, pretty well. And he puts in a little bit of information here for us readers. Uh, and he says, all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So when Joseph awakes from his dream, it says that he went and did what the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife uh, and uh, you know the rest of the story. Uh, you know, it was a very small place. Everybody would have known their business. Uh, they'd have all been uh, talking about the fact that Mary uh, was uh, looked as if she was pregnant. Uh, there would be uh, lots of uh, conversations going on, no doubt. Uh, who is the father of this child? Who is the daddy? Uh, and uh, Mary would have been uh, under considerable uh, emotional pressure. She would have been uh, ostracised she would have been disgraced. But it wasn't particularly easy for Joseph either, because by marrying Mary, uh, he is uh, more or less saying that the child is his. In those days and, and uh, under uh, the laws of Jewish marriage, uh, he too would have been seen as having broken uh, his betrothal vows. Uh, Joseph does a very remarkable thing his love for Mary uh, and his love for God uh, means far more to him uh, than the respect of neighbours and uh, even his close family. And let's face it, they would have been very, very upset because it took you know, up to a year or even two years to plan uh, a marriage feast. It would have taken a long time to arrange White garments uh, had to be made for uh, every uh, marriage guest to wear at the wedding. Uh, it was really something to look forward to and both families would have been incredibly uh, disappointed. Uh, I think that Joseph's family would have been extremely disappointed with him too for breaking his betrothal uh, vow as they would have seen it uh, had he been the father of Mary's baby. Soon after this they had to go to Bethlehem anyway because Joseph was of the tribe of Judah uh, so his uh, genealogy went back to King David. Uh, interesting because all the prophecies in the Old Testament uh, said that the Messiah would be a descendant of King David. So when they get to Bethlehem, uh, and we'll be talking about this more on Christmas Day, and Mary's about to give birth, they're in this desperate state where they need to find somewhere to live. Why doesn't Joseph's family take them in? But we find that everywhere they go, there is no room. And so it's possible uh, that Joseph too was being ostracised by his family because of the disgrace that he'd uh, supposedly brought upon the family name. So despite his youth, he doesn't give in to the easy way or the way uh, that exonerates him from shame. Uh, but he does what is right. Uh, he takes Mary uh, and he cares for baby Jesus as if he really is the father of that child. It's interesting because it says at the end of that passage that Joseph names the baby Jesus. So he does just as the angel commanded him to do. And that Jesus, which was a very common name, there were lots of Jesuses about, it means God saves. But in this case, uh, Matthew's put in a little bit more, God saves his people from their sins. But by Joseph naming the baby, he is also saying, this is my baby, to all uh, purposes, that this is my child. What does all this have to do with us today? Well, families are still complicated, aren't they? Uh, many of you listening to this 
uh, will be bringing up children who may not be biologically your own. Uh, perhaps uh, you're a, a grandparent of such children. Uh, and yet those children are so precious to you. The law of God uh, was not just about justice and retribution. Uh, even back in those days, there was a, a vein of Jewish thought that emphasised compassion uh, as an alternative way uh, of getting justice. Uh, so you didn't necessarily uh, have to insist that the person who'd wronged you uh, paid you back. Uh, and that's interesting. I think we can see that uh, in Joseph in the sense that uh, there's no way he's going to put Mary through a court hearing and uh, being stoned to death. Uh, even though he's angry and upset, uh, his uh, thoughts of justice uh, are about compassion rather than retribution. And of course we see this later in Jesus, don't we, in so many ways. Uh, for example, when the Pharisees bring before him this woman who's been caught in adultery and they're insisting uh, that he gives the word for her to be stoned, uh, there's no way uh, Jesus is going to agree to that. And I think we see Joseph there, the way that Joseph has always been uh, towards women uh, towards Mary uh, and uh, Jesus has been brought up with this excellent role model.